on the unfair lures, you'll see it's got a barb on the outside. All the unfair lures barbs a little bit on the outside. So when you hook a fish in the gills now, you've got a smooth hook there. It slides up and down. I almost don't see bleeding gill fish anymore. In fact, I can't remember when last a fish died when I was fishing with an unfair lure that I, that I couldn't give up. And another thing that you're going to find fishing unfair lures, and there's quite a few that have fished them, you'll find that when you fish an unfair lure, it's very seldom are you hooking a fish outside the mouth. Most times it's, it's like the difference between a reaction strike where a fish is just slapping or snapping at a bait, and other time is he's striking at it to swallow. Oftentimes you find an unfair lure right in the throat of the fish. So the, the outside barb hook is specifically designed to minimize gill damage, etc so we can release a fish successfully. Now, who here has ever hooked themselves? Who's hooked themselves in? Hey, there's a lot of liars in this room. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of liars here. The, um, the worst thing, I tell you, it's, it's, I've seen many folks, you know, they're fishing and they land a trout or something or a jack or a skipjack, you know, and that, that fish just shakes his head and boom! Sorry, boom, I just did it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a trout hanging on your hand. Case in point, just a while back, I caught a nice size snook in Florida. Yeah, it's like 12 o'clock at night fishing a, a spillway you know, at, a, at, a, at a dam. And um, I thought, ah, it's a rat, this guy, man, a little rat snook. And I, I picked it up with a leader and I just grabbed it by the lip, you know. So I've got it with this hand. And I'm just taking the hook out and this thing shakes, pa 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 pa, and it comes out of my hand and the next thing, it's still in my hand, but it's hanging on my pinky. I had one of these hooks right through my pinky, like right through. So I've got the snook stuck there. And uh, now you could, um, so the cool part about this is so I, I slung the snook in between my legs, because now, now to, I've got the hook stuck on, on my bait. Now how do I stop the hook, the, the snook from thrashing around and shaking? So I've got to use my right hand. So, I'm not an octopus, you know, that I've got another set of legs here that can take my knife out of my pocket. You know? So I slung the snook in between my legs, took my knife out, and uh, then I realized, but hang on a second, I don't have to do that. These are turbo sets, man. These are the reverse bar books. So I pulled the hook away from my pinky like a chup, and I just slipped it right out of my finger. I was quite cool about that, and you know, I just... So that's happened to me quite a bit, and... Um, I had a, a, an eye surgeon phone me from West Palm Beach a while back, it was me about six months ago. And he said to me, I found your name off your website on the back of a plug. And I said, well, that's interesting. He said, no, we recently, or today, took a hook out of a patient's eye. And it was one of your reverse bar hooks. I thought, oh, damn, is this now a lawsuit coming? <laughs> and, um, he said to me, he said to me, are you the, the designer? I said, yes, sir, I designed the hooks, etc. He said to me, I want to tell you, these hooks are a breakthrough in eye injury technology because we were able to extract that hook out of a patient's eye without making an incision and making a, creating more damage. But apparently the guy had been fishing somewhere at night and uh, uh, caught, caught a big skipjack and a, and a fast current, etc. and the plug came out of its mouth and he didn't even see it coming but it smacked him in the face you know, and boom, there, there, there the damage was. So the hooks are designed for um, releasing a fish but they've got a cutting point on them, they're super quick hook sets. They come with split rings on them, $8.99 for 10. So if you need to replace your hooks, you know, we have them in stock and Raymond will have them here. I want to ask you something. Do some of you folks uh, sometimes get rust issues with treble hooks or rust issues with your hooks? Yes. Okay. All right. Let me tell you where that comes from largely. So you go fishing and you come home and you rinse your rods off nicely and you do what I do. You store your hook there or you store it here on the, on the, on the little line to it. That's fair and well. I don't store it inside the guide on the ceramic, but on the frame, I typically store it there. Now you put your rod away. So most rods are graphite, carbon fiber, etc. They store an electrical charge. That electrical charge goes up the frame of your guide or up the gut of this little hook keeper, which is stainless or titanium, and it makes a sacrificial anode out of your hook like a battery terminal. Your rod actually makes your makes your hooks rust. So if you want to, to stop rust, you know, just put a little O-ring or something here on the butt, 
I don't do it because I'm not going to make the hooks of my hooks rust, I just <laughs> <laughs> so, Anyway, put a little o-ring here, just store your hook on the o-ring so it's not conductive and you'll see you won't have any corrosion issues. We cannot stop corrosion on hooks. The reason for it is this, that um, to make a thin wire diameter, high carbon steel, super strong hook, you have to use carbon steel. You can't use stainless. Stainless 316, uh, pure stainless steel is very soft. 302 stainless stains a little bit, but to make a hook that's strong with a wire diameter like that, the two hooks will weigh more than the float. That's why we can't use stainless on, on a float. So we use high carbon steel and they black nickel plated, etc. So um, that's about the best we can do as far as a thin diameter hook. Uh, we have an option of using a tinned hook, like a lot of the uh, hook companies come with tinned hooks, etc. But they corrode as well. As soon as you put that split ring on and you damage that tin there, there where you put the split ring over, that split ring and the tinned hook there is, is, is a dissimilar metals. You get cathodic reaction there right away. So they last a little bit longer, but. They don't have the outside bar, they don't have the cutting point, etc. So we, we just prefer to, to use the, uh, the unfairest turbo set hooks. But that'll negate a little bit of the corrosion for you right there. I'll pass this uh, plug around. You'll see on the front of an unfair lure is a swivel. There are two different size swivels we use. On the smaller plugs, it's a 95 pound stainless steel swivel. Believe me, it's 95 pounds. The equivalent Spro stainless steel swivel to mine is 33 pounds. This swivel is 140 pounds stainless steel. That's my mullet. It's the exact mold of a living mullet. Exactly. The, you'll see with a bleeding gill, you can just pass those around. In fact, before you pass it around, I just want to show the guy something. Okay. I'll do this, uh, this little uh, thing at the shows. If you hold your finger out like this and you drop an anti lure on your hook, on your, oops. Put the hook on your finger. Most times it'll sit in your skin. You turn your finger upside down and that plug's stuck in your skin. That's how sharp the hooks are. Now, you familiar with owner hooks? Everybody familiar with owner? The cutting points on the owner and then you, the trocars, etc. Now, if you look at an uh, owner and a trocar carefully, you'll see the cutting point sits on the outside of the hook. Cutting point's actually on the outside of the shank of the hook. How often uh, when you fish with a plug, whether you're fishing for bass, specks, red, snook, whatever, when you land the fish with a plug with trebles, you'll see you've only got them by one hook. That happen, often happens to me a lot. I see, I see it quite a bit. Sometimes you hook them inside the mouth, you've got them with one hook or one other hook, but very seldom if you've got them with a bunch of trebles in one place. I want to show you what happens when you get a hook set with a single, with a single hook. You see that's not going in straight, that's straight, that's going in skew. It's actually dragging in. You can see the dragging of the hook point. Let me show you. See that hook point's not going straight in like a syringe needle, it's actually dragging in. That's when I put pressure on one point. Not doing that, it's actually dragging in. Dragging in, not going in straight. So the pressure on the hook point is on the inside of the bend of the hook. You see that? Pressure is on the inside of the bend of the hook. So now ask all of you in the court of public opinion, if the cutting blade is here on the outside, how was that helping you? You wouldn't sharpen a knife and then cut with the back of the knife, would you? <laughs> but that's the case. <clears throat> You see the advert you see in the magazine of all the different hook points going into ballistic gel. When that point goes in straight, it's correct. But this is the reality. The reality is sugar doesn't give you energy like they say in the adverts. It just gives you a glycemic spike. That's all it does. Your body takes more energy to change sugar into energy than what it actually gives you. It just gives you acid, that's all. Ask all the old guys. Okay, so that's a little bit about the unfinished hook. Okay. For those of you that haven't seen an unfinished shrimp, you pass one around. I normally just bite for the carbon off, but I've been threatened with my life by my wife. I'm very scared of it. <laughs> <laughs> see, there's the unfinished shrimp. You'll see the tail. 
line attaches here and it goes backwards and upwards when you retrieve it it's also for the guys that like rattles i mean there's a lot of jig heads or one jig head company that specializes in having a rattle in the jig head this is very important there's nothing in nature that rattles nothing and i see adverts where they say oh you know the rattle sounds like a school of swimming fish Jeepers, man, you need toilet paper for your mouth. It's <laughs> 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 absolutely junk. But you know, if, if, if rattles float, float the boat, you know, fish don't have credit cards, fishermen have. So let's give them what they want. I don't care whether it rattles or doesn't rattle. It makes zero difference to me. In fact, I never had any flies that rattled. I've caught 358 species on a fly rod. So, um, here's, I'm going to hand the shrimp around this side. You guys can look at it. Super durable. It's just on, I think it's like $8.99 $8 or something like that. Um, if you compare them with soft baits, you know, the, 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 that little shrimp, they last super long unless you lose it. Damager in chief on, on uh, Thursday morning. Have you, have you guys heard of a, a plug called a rip and slash? Rip and slash. It's basically a cigar manner, but I took the head section which starts the sonic signature and the tail section which completes it. But a cigar manner is a long bait, and I took I just, I just basically cut the body out, just made it a shorter cigar manner comes with a little bleeding gill, etc. But this bait has become like almost our number one selling bait with a shrimp from North Carolina all the way down to, to McAllen. It's a super search bait. Um, I was able to fish this the other day up in Arroyo City in water that was in places this deep. It's super slow sinking. And if it does hit the bottom, you'll see this bait actually will come to rest on its front hook and stand in the air like that. None of my baits will fall over on their sides. They dynamically balance, they'll stand like this will point up. So if you're fishing in an area where you know there are flounder, you can actually mess with the flounder like it. I mean, you can just work a bait up and just let it settle, work it a little bit up and let it settle. The unfair nurse rip and slash is designed to be a number one search bait. One super long casting, accurate casting, no spinning or anything like that. Beautiful action in the water, side to side, you twitch, twitch and pause, twitch, twitch and pause fishes. Um, very nice action. The bleeding gills on the baits, no matter. I mean, you can see this bait here has been beat up already. I mean, it's already caught quite a lot of fish. There's nothing wrong with the gill. It looks like it's brand new. I have some baits that have caught nearly 300 fish and the, the gill is still fine. Beaten up, but still ready to roll. There we go. I'll just pass that around, you guys can look at it. Um, what I wanted to do this evening is not so much of an infomercial and unfair lures, but I will say one thing about unfair lures. In five years, I've never fished one other bait, not one other bait. And we've had amazing days. I went offshore with a friend out of Apalachicola the other day, and um, he said to me, he said, those baits are not going to work here. He said, he's not sure. He's fished this place all his life. He's 55 years old, and he said, hmm. He said, you might want to put on a, a bait rig or one of these deep uh, butterfly uh, jigs or something like that. And I said to him, well, if after an hour I haven't caught anything, then I'll change to your system. He let it heal. And he said, okay, fine. Long story short, I finished the day with 14 species. And during the course of the entire day, we caught more than 200 fish. After about a half an hour, he was fishing in unfair lures as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we caught amberjack. I got an 80 pound amberjack on, a, on, a, on the big rip and slash. We caught kingfish. So many kingfish, they were a damn nuisance. What I wanted to catch was a blackfin tuna and we wouldn't find any. But we caught bonita, we caught mahi, we caught red snappers up to 34 pounds on unfair lures. It was an amazing fish to catch. We caught mangroves, almaco jack, lesser amber jack, um, uh, triggerfish, and a bunch of other species. It was really interesting. And all we did 
get the base down lower, and I would just use like a 4.5. 